If you're not careful, the sports card market can be full of danger. Last week, I looked at the cards that went up the most in value and the lessons we can take from that to make money in the year ahead. This week, I want to look at the cards that have gone down the most in value and see how we can protect ourselves from danger and major losses. Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Teapot back for another Market Movers video. And this week, I'm here to tell you how you can protect yourself from big time losses in the sports card market. You know, we talk at, a lot at Sports Card Investor about having a plan, having a strategy, studying and becoming a student of the market and of the sports card hobby. And one of the keys to becoming a smart investor is to take time to reflect and look for lessons in the market, especially because things are changing all of the time. You know, some of the things that we thought we knew last year or we did know at that time have since changed. So I periodically like to slow down and take some time to look at the latest trends and see what's been happening. And one of the best ways to do that is to look retrospectively at the cards that have gone up the most and down the most and learn those lessons. Let's go take a look at our price movements by card and see which cards have gone down the most in the last year. So right off the bat, the first card on this list, Jarrett Stidham, his 2019 Prism Base PSA 10. This card looks like it's gone down almost 91% in the last 365 days. Let's pull up the chart. Now, somebody like Jared Stidham is really, to me, the truest form of speculation, of rookie speculation. There's different kinds of rookie speculation. There's buying into rookies who are first round draft picks, who are highly touted, who were highly scouted, who were highly thought of. And then there's guys like Jared Stidham who were drafted in the fourth round, who were backups, and who people were excited might get a quick opportunity. And this is the classic case of where people were probably looking to see Oh, if I buy into this guy, you know, he could be the next guy up, especially in New England. He could be the next Tom Brady. He could be, you know, get a good spot start and see his prices go crazy and capitalize. This is the type of risk that I have absolutely no appetite for. Never bought a single Jarrett Stidham card. I've never bought any cards for anybody like him. There are certainly instances where buying guys like this could have paid off. Jarrett Stidham's cards did go up in price. So if you bought in ahead of that, then you made some money. But when I look at this particular chart, what I see is the exact reason why I don't buy into players like this. And really what this comes down to is doing your research. So this card was, you know, all the way up to $250, most recently down around $15 to $20. Now I was saying all last year, sell Jared Stidham. If you go back and look in February, I actually wrote in my card pick when his cards were around $50 that I would be selling Jared Stidham then, even though he was on a downward trajectory. And you can see since then he's down another 30 bucks, uh, down 60, really 60% 60 since that time. So again, this is really about educating yourself and knowing the odds. That's the first lesson from this week's research is do your research and know the odds of a player succeeding. Don't buy into the hype. Now, Jarrett Stidham was not really that great of a quarterback in college. I, I That's part of the reason why I haven't really understood why people were in love with this guy. Yes, he was efficient. He was in the SEC. 18 touchdowns, five interceptions in his junior year before he went went pro to the NFL. But that is nothing to blush about. That's nothing to, to get excited about. And if you look at the odds of fourth round quarterbacks, this is where the research comes into play. Now, here's some interesting bullet points from arrowheadpride.com. And the one that's really key here is, in the last 10 years, 38 quarterbacks have been drafted in the fifth and sixth rounds. Not one has become a starter. And you can see in the line right above that, that only 8% of the fourth round quarterbacks end up being starters. These are all statistics about you know starting quarterbacks based on the round that they were drafted. So m moving on to a similar piece of data, quarterbacks drafted from 1990 to 2016 from milehighreport.com. And you can see that in the fourth round, their definition, they kind of laid out in the article of what success looks like, but only 13% success from fourth round quarterbacks. And that success is really not that impressive. Again, from footballoutsiders.com, if you come over here, and I'll just bring your attention to this particular section, game started by quarterbacks drafted in different rounds. And in the fourth round, you can see the record is 157 and 224, only a 41% win percentage, only 382 games started compared to, you know, over 40, you know, 4,000 from the first and second round. So when I'm looking at quarterbacks, you know, this, this new draft this year uh, looks like it potentially has some opportunity. There's a few guys drafted in the, you know, I think they were all drafted turn of the, the third or fourth round. There might be some opportunity in there. If you're going to do it, you can kind of get in early and, and buy a few of them. 
But even now, the hype, I feel like, is so crazy for any quarterback. You had cards of Easton Stick selling for crazy money, and the guy hasn't even played a single you know, NFL snap. S stay away from this type of risk. In my opinion, don't get into these guys. There's much better things you can be putting your money into and things which have just as much opportunity to go absolutely haywire and much lower risk. Always think about the floor with a card as much as you think about the ceiling of what it could go to. Now, really depressing. If you look at Jared Stidham's stats, you know, absolutely nothing to smile about. He hasn't really played. He's played in eight games total. He didn't start any of them. Abysmal completion percentage, you know, four picks, two touchdowns, terrible passer rating. The future doesn't look bright for Stidham. I'm sure he's a really nice guy, but I'm not buying any of his cards anytime soon, and I don't think he'll be getting many more chances in the NFL. The next guy I want to look at here is Keston Hira, and Keston Hira is a guy that actually I was kind of high on. I didn't invest too much. You've heard in past videos that I like to diversify in baseball, and that's going to be the lesson of this particular card is diversification is key. So when you look at Keston Hira's Tops Update rookie card in PSA 10, you can see it's just come down, 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 down. And what's the story with Keston Hira? Well, the story is that Keston Hira had an awesome, awesome rookie season. You know, he played 84 games, he scored 51 runs and 49 RBIs. So double that, basically on pace in 162 game season. He was on pace to almost 100 runs and 100 RBIs and almost 18 stolen bases with a 303 average. And he would have been on pace for roughly 35 to 38 home runs. That would have been an absolutely remarkable rookie campaign. So I did buy some Keston Hira cards going into this 2020 season before everything kind of got put on hold and delayed. Hira was one of the guys that I was uh, investing in as part of that uh, baseball portfolio. He's one of the few guys whose cards I'm still holding. And the reason is that he just did not perform last year. I thought, hold him and see if he can perform this year. Even worse this year, he just got demoted to AAA Nashville and he's really not doing very well in his first four games there. The strikeout rates are abysmal. It'll be interesting to see if he can get it going. You know, he was a first round draft pick, I think seventh or ninth pick overall by the Brewers. Typically these guys in the first round in baseball have a pretty high success rate. Hira hasn't been one of them so far. He's still really young. He's only 24 years old, which is young, really young for baseball. So we'll see if Keston Hira can get it going. But again, in baseball especially, diversification is the key. And in general, diversification is a really good strategy. But I didn't put all my eggs in one basket with Hira. I had money into Tatis, I had money into Soto, I had money into Vladdy, I had money into Bichette, other players. So I'm not really impacted a terrible amount by this, as opposed to if I had put you know, a ton of money into Hero because I got too swept away and, and captivated by one flash in the pan in a good season. So when it comes to diversification, I'll just give you an example. You know, Right now, you've got a lot of hot players and, and a lot of people, you know, guys who people are really excited about in baseball. Vidal Brujan, Julio Rodriguez, uh, Kalenic, uh, uh, Kalenic, actually, I believe is how it's pronounced. I keep saying that wrong. Wander Franco, uh, you know, Marco Luciano, Nuelve Marte is killing it. Some of these guys are really killing it. Brujan, Rodriguez, uh, Franco, and, and Marte are absolutely destroying the minors right now. Bobby Wood Jr. is about to, you know, get his first start. And uh, a few of these other guys are obviously have a lot of hype around them. Kalenic just came up to the pros and, and, and hit his first uh, home run. Invest in all of these if you're going to invest in these baseball, if you can. Don't put too much into one of these guys. You can do that, but you know maybe it's bigger risk, bigger reward. If you had invested only in Tatis, I guess you'd be doing really well. But much smarter play to look at all of these guys collectively, put some money into each of them, and then wait, and you can kind of pick the timing and pick your spots when they surge. The next card is this Giannis Antetokounmpo 2019 Optic Hollow PSA 10. And the lesson here is going to be uh, watch out for low pop count cards of non-rookie cards when they debut, especially on ultra modern stuff. You know, going back here to last year in June, Giannis was hot. Everybody was high on Giannis. Uh, the season had been paused. You know, the Bucks were in first place. It was obvious he was going to win the MVP. And this card, I imagine, I don't have the pop count from that date, but it's pop 190 today. I imagine it was half of that or even less a year ago uh, when this happened, probably even significantly less than that. Um, if you think about the fact that, you know, Optic is one of the later uh, products to come out. So really that's the lesson here is, you know, don't buy these PSA 10 
cards of veterans especially or of rookies right when they come out they're only going to go down after that over time this card might stabilize the market has obviously soured quite a bit on Giannis because the Bucks aren't the first team in the East he's not going to win the MVP this year he's not going to win defensive player of the year people want to see that team win before they're willing to give Giannis you know some kind of a sustained credibility here otherwise he's just going to look like another great player who never won anything so Remains to be seen what's going to happen with Giannis. Another bonus tip here is, in general, what I've observed, and I, I think this to be true, in basketball cards, even in other sports, the market tends to focus or only have enough appetite, enough uh, capital to want to put into like two or three of the top veterans, the top kind of non-rookie cards every year, and everybody else sort of like falls way down in price. And so last year, it was honestly LeBron and Giannis. And then to some extent Steph, but he was injured. This year the money has shifted and it's still obviously LeBron number one and then Steph and then KD stuff has gone up quite a bit. Luca's second and third year stuff is obviously really expensive. Giannis's stuff has come down quite a bit in general, especially, especially as non-rookie cards. So keep that in mind too. If you're investing in different non-rookie cards for players, typically you wanna focus on rookie cards, uh, you know, high-end inserts, super low pop stuff that's definitely low pop that didn't just come out with things, you know, if you're looking back at 2014, 2015, 2016 product, a lot of that stuff is probably safe if it's low pop now. So just keep that in mind. That's another tip. The next card, a quick one here is Timo Werner, a soccer one to touch on. Let's look at this card. And really the tip here is going to be watch out for hype in soccer. And in soccer, if it's true in basketball, that the you know the the goats only have it, people only have an appetite in the market for the, the 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 top two or three players in the league for their non rookie cards in soccer it's people really seem to only have an appetite for the absolute best players at any given time and so you think about Messi and Ronaldo you can think about um, you know Diego Maradona and Pele you can think about Erling Haaland and Mbappe. And that's pretty much it. Now those two guys, Holland and Mbappe, are the two who people are obviously really, really locked into. They they seem to be the next, I don't want to say the next Messi and Ronaldo, but the next placeholders for those two guys in the, the, the global uh, picture of soccer. Timo Werner had a lot of hype. German national team has a lot of young talent that people have been kind of excited about. And obviously going to Chelsea was a you know a big deal. And yet this card has just come crashing down. And this in general is what we see in the soccer card market with these young guys. People are really looking and, and, and kind of spastic about looking for the next young player who's gonna be the next big thing after Erling Haaland and Mbappe. And I just wanna point out that if you look at the list over the last 90 days, I would be selling Jude Bellingham. I'd be selling Mason Mount. I'd be selling Vinicius Jr. And look at a guy like Vinicius Jr. Okay, so this, his, this is Optic Hollow Raw which is his uh, kind of rookie card, uh, rated rookie card. So it looks like it's gone way up, right? But let's get a little bit more context on this. We've seen this before. Look at where this card was back in September, and then look at where it came down to. Way, way down. So this is why having a tool like Market Movers is so important to be able to zoom out more than 90 days. If you were on eBay, all you'd see is that this card has gone up from $40 to $150 and you'd be thinking, wow, the sky's the limit, Vinicius Jr., he's a great young player. We've seen this before. Could this card keep going up? Yeah, it could, it definitely could. And he is a great young player, but just be careful and don't get too caught up in the hype of soccer players because what you'll see is that they come down just as fast as they went up. Okay, final bonus tip. Looking at this LaMelo Ball 2020 Hoops Base PSA 10. The lesson here is pretty simple. Don't buy hoops base cards right when they get graded, right when they come out. Don't buy this lower end stuff that's gotten way too hyped up and, and, and costs way too much money for what type of product it is now. This card has come down catastrophically, $2,400, you know, $2,600 or $2,200 all the way down now to Charlotte getting obliterated by the Pacers in their knockout game and down to $275, which is probably still too high, in my opinion. So there was a lot of this stuff printed. 
The wax was expensive. It drove the prices up. PSA has been closed. There's going to be way more of this stuff in the pipeline from PSA. Don't buy products like Hoops right when they come out. It's not going to bode well for your investment portfolio. All right, so some quick lessons there. I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you're not already, please subscribe to this channel. I really enjoy taking time to reflect like this and to look back and see how we can apply these lessons from the market from the last year to the year ahead. Please leave a comment if you have any other tips or any other things that you notice from the cards that have gone down the most and how people should protect themselves. And until next time, happy investing.